evening. My name is Christina Dehaven Call. It is my incredible, incredible honor to be up here with this amazing uh, cast and crew of Yellow Rose. Um, let's just go down the line, shall we? We have, you really can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Leia Salonga. Princess Punzala. <laughs> and in his debut performance in a principal role in feature film, Mr. Liam Booth. but I also wanted to speak to the Red States in this film, you know, to have the country music in that life be portrayed. And I hope that when, when this film plays theatrically uh, across the country, those people will come and say, it needs to be a broken family. Um, so that's, that's really, I think it's also divine providence because now I think this film is the most needed. I, I read they opened a new special detainment center in Texas just for children. 3,000 children will be housed there separated from their parents. We need this film. And, and, and by the way, just really quickly, it's a small independent film. It's each and every one of you getting the word out that we'll put this film in front of as many eyeballs as we possibly can. And that's really our goal. Um, I hope you agree. So if, if you like this film, please go to yellowrosefilm.com, tweet about us, yellowrosefilm, hashtag, all the rest. Um, so, and also, you know, with this kind of a story, there's so many different ways that you could have told this. Um, and it's really interesting to really think about your take on, you know, Rose as a dreamer, and also, you know, an ICE officer letting her go. And these are really interesting choices. Can you talk a little bit about that as a director? That scene was added, actually, um, pretty late into the process. Um, there's no real enemy in the film. I chose not to show the faces of the ICE. Um, the enemy is an institution. The enemy is an ideology. The only face we see is the face of empathy, is a face of um, civil disobedience, of, of helping people when they're down. Isn't that what makes America great? Not the wall. Not the situation, but empathy. So the only face I chose to show was the faces of empathy of Dale, of Jolene, of the ice officer. 
And Cecilia, you were touching upon this a little bit in the beginning before the film started. Um, this is also a long partnership here. And can you talk a little bit about how, how you know, can you expand a bit about how you two met and how you came on board? Um, yeah. So it was eight years ago. I was working with the Filipino American Legal Defense Fund. And I just looked up and I saw Miss Lloyd Lewis. I have to give her a shout out because she's the one that got me into the Filipino Legal Defense Fund. <laughs> Film, so she has supported us from the very beginning. Uh, her daughter is actually in the film. She plays the attorney who deports her mother. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, I, it was right around the time of DACA, and uh, Diane came to us for research, and so we were just. She was like, "Can you help me uh, interview these undocumented immigrants?" And because I want, I have a story I need to tell, and I just kind of, you know, followed her went around, and this was like, okay. And then it turned into a small documentary and then sort of snowballed into me writing grants for the project. And then <laughs> associate producer and then all of a sudden a lead producer. And then we did a short film about five years ago and then it's, here we are now, eight years ago. And Liam, you are so, I'm going to embarrass you, but so lovable. We have a term called, it's, it's key. How do you, how do you translate? <laughs> <laughs> it basically means that you're so lovable in this movie. Thank you. <laughs> you are incredible in this film, and you play such an important, but aside from the Kilik, you play such an important character in this film. Can you talk about from your approach to Elliot and what it was like uh, playing this character? Yeah, uh, Elliot was, he was very real to me when I read him. I didn't really have to put much thought into his mindset just because most of the things that he was going through, I would be feeling the same way. So it was very easy to kind of get into that mode and just help out whenever I can and to, to try to get my, my friend out of just this impossibly hard reality. So it was, it was, it was really great to just get in there and, and, and try to make, you know, the best possible outcome. Um, and uh, Princess, you, I heard you've been waiting a really long time to play this role, um, Priscilla. Uh, can you also talk about that process? I mean, it's such a, you were obviously in some of the most difficult scenes in this film, so what was that like? Uh, so in 2013, I received an email from, uh, first from Clarissa de los Reyes, and uh, <laughs> that she said that Diane was going to send me an email regarding this movie. And then we got to talk, and then she sent me the script. I loved it. I felt like it was very relevant and it's what's happening around us. And I said, yes, I would love to be a part of it. I'm gonna brag on her more. Um, she was a partner in this. When we did the short film, she auditioned against every actress and we saw a lot, girls and you, just were that, you know, Jolene in the film says, just keep the faith. That was her, just keep the faith, Diane, and you, you kept me going, and you just were there the whole time advising us, and the connection you had with Eva was in immediate. And, um, and because she's not here, I just want to give a shout out to our extraordinary lead, Eva Nopezada. <laughs> I believe she's just going to be a big star. I hope you agree. She is an extraordinary talent. Um, that song that she's trying to finish is the song she tried to finish and didn't finish. <laughs> but she is just an amazing actress and uh, extraordinary talent. And I'm just great, grateful this is her feature film debut. And we should mention also the reason she's not here. The reason she's yeah. not here, she happens to be in a little play called Hades Town <laughs> that won the Tony. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, she can't be here tonight, but she sends her regards. And Leia, I heard, uh, I was told that this is the first
film that you've done in over 20 years. Yeah. Is that true? Okay. <laughs> and it's also the first fill-in film you've done, period. Period, yeah. Right. Okay, so the question is, why this film? Why did you say yes? Um, I think my manager first sent me the script, and his name is ro was rolling on the credits, so he'll be very happy to know that. <laughs> um, so I will report back to him. He's, up he's in upstate for the weekend. Um, he says, he sends me the script. Here he says, read the part of Gail. So I read pretty much a lot of her stuff, and it's, there's this instant recognition of, oh, it's that relative <laughs> that all of us have instant, I'm, I'm like, ooh, I totally know who this woman is. <laughs> I gotta do this, and I loved it. So I, I said yes, and it was a really quick yes. It was like, it wasn't a long shoot. I, I, I wasn't with you for very long. Yeah, how many days was the shoot, Tony? We shot uh, 19 days in the States and one day in the Philippines. Oh, with a single camera. Oh, um, there's, a, there's a whole gang is here, right? You have other yes. uh, crew members? Yes, if you worked on the film, please stand up. especially, you know, Filipino, Filipino-American faces and being represented, every story, uh, any story being represented on screen. Um, and that there's a, a serious hunger for this, for content, period. Are, where are our Kababayan filmmakers here, our Filipino-American filmmakers in the audience? Any of you come out to join us? Maybe a little shy, aspiring <laughs> filmmakers? Okay, so, so for our aspiring filmmakers, existing filmmakers in our community, our Filipino-American community, you said you made this film for Filipino-Americans by, for, and about. Uh, there is not enough of Filipino-American content out there, period. There are years, if not decades, that go by in between films and, and premieres. So uh, what, and this is really for any one of you, uh, what advice do you have for aspiring filmmakers in terms of, you know, Getting, getting out there and, and taking that step. You know, 15 years sounds intimidating, but you said at the beginning of, of this evening that it was worth every moment. Yeah, um, I, I think, um, you know, I will say that in those 15 years, there were a lot of opportunities I had actually to make the film. If I changed this character to this race, right? If I added this storyline and took out that, um, my advice to those people is, you have one chance to tell your big first film. I mean, this is my first narrative film. I've done other documentaries and other films, but don't compromise. Tell the story you want to tell. Be authentic. It doesn't matter if it takes one year or two years. I hope it doesn't take 15 years. I hope I waited there in line for you guys a little bit longer so I could knock down the door and break it down a little bit wider for the rest of you. There is an audience for it. Um, you can't imagine the amount of no's that we've gotten uh, told, even now, um, even with all the accolades. Uh, it's hard. Uh, people tell us we, they love the film. It's too small. Too small or too Filipino? Too small, too specific. Um, let's, we're, I'm going to prove them wrong. <laughs> I'm going to prove them wrong. To wait another 20 years to do a film. You know? We need more. We need more. Oh, I've got plans for her. <laughs> oh, yes. Please. Please. Audience, <laughs> audience questions. Stand up and speak loud. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Bim, Mulata Filipinas from the Philippines. Uh, hello. Uh, um, thank you for the film. Uh, it's 
kindly moving, but at the same time, it left me wanting for more. Any plans for part two? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm also a teaching artist, so I, I, I work with students all the time, I work with undocumented students, and a few weeks ago my, my student contacted me and was like, I'm pretty scared, can I tattoo my name, my, your number on my arm? I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, this is kind of the world that we're living in, but you know, just as a reminder, we're all sort of living in a world where everyone has the right to say something, but very few have a responsibility. And so I just want everyone to understand that there's a responsibility when you start to push these issues. You don't just push them and not understand where they're coming from. You have to be in the middle and you have to talk about it. With this particular story, talk about it. Educate people. Tell them, you know, tell them it's a good film. This also happens to have good music. You know, there's an underlying story. We didn't make this, and Diana's very smart about it. She didn't make it too political because we don't want the other side, whatever side you belong to, we don't want to alienate any other side. We want you to see the story, see the humanity behind it. Share your story. Um, also, just we do plan to do an impact um, um, We do plan to do an impact campaign, and um, please reach out to us because we do plan to do um, community screenings, particularly with undocumented people. We want to involve um, institutions like the ACLU. I have a friend here that can help. Um, but you know, we do plan to do community screenings um, for uh, people to be edu educate them throughout the country. So yes, I mean, please reach out to us. Uh, we have time for one more question, unfortunately, but we will be sticking around. Uh, actually, you know, can we just take two more? Um, you and then, yes ma'am, you up there, okay. Hi. Hi, I'm Fatima Zadani. I grew up in Dubai, and I'm Indian origin, but I call myself a global citizen and belonging and home has been a question. New York is my home, and that's the only place I've ever felt like home. But this story should resonate everywhere. It's not just Filipino Americans, but immigration, refugee situation, everywhere around the world today, people are not able to recognize each other on the streets that they're walking because they're like, this is from a different country. We're all global citizens, so how are you taking this internationally? How are you positioning it internationally? Because I think this is very relevant across the world right now. Um, yes, um, I agree, and um, I think there's a frightening thing that's happening in the world, and that's the fear of the other. Yes. It's everywhere. It's in Brexit. It's in it's in Latin America. It's here. Um, it's in the Philippines. Um, it's all over. We do plan to release the film theatrically, internationally. So to answer your question. <laughs> to acknowledge the woman speaking. <laughs> That's Gigi Demet. Gigi Demet. She is one of the first Filipinos to win an Academy Award. <laughs> Push the door a little bit. Um, we are doing our darndest to get this film shown theatrically. Um, we are very close. <laughs> I think we're 
uh, we'll have an announcement soon, but I, I think and I hope you will see this in a theater in your community and in your country very soon. And, uh, <laughs> I know, <laughs> well, I wish um, we didn't have to like, help. You're, okay, I have one yeah. more. Uh, help each other. Film is a community effort. Um, there's so many filmmakers out here who have helped me. Um, Isabella, uh, Sandy Hall, Andrea Walter, uh, HP Mendoza, Clarissa de los Reyes, the great PJ Raval, who's here. <laughs> um, so, and Marie Jamora. Say their names, watch their films, support each other. We are, we're starting to form our little amigos community. Uh, Ramona Diaz, they're and, and we're, we're, we really are supporting each other. Um, but thank you so much. We want to partay Filipino style. <laughs>